Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. It's time to get into an end of the day wrap up on everything that happened today and where we currently sit. And before we get into anything else, I want to point this out. If you guys did not watch the last video that I just put out about 3.15 p.m., it's talking about how big tech is really the source of the collateralization behind AMC short positions. And let me break that down a little bit uh, further and make it easier to understand. So pretty much how it works is when you short a stock, there's unlimited risk. You guys know that. Numbers go on until affinity. In theory, a stock could also do the same. So it's different than when you buy a stock because when you buy a stock, your worst case scenario is that it goes to zero. When you short a stock, you can lose all of your money and a lot more than that, right? Pretty straightforward. I think a lot of people understand that. Well, when you take on those short positions, these hedge funds, they don't have unlimited capital. So if you don't have unlimited capital, then you're going to have to put up some collateral. It's much the same way of a bank even lending you a personal loan or a mortgage. That personal loan, they're not going to give you a personal loan if you make 30000 a year for a million dollars because you just, you're not going to be able to pay that back. But let's say you made $30,000 a year and you wanted a million dollar loan, but you put up $500,000. Well, that makes a little bit more sense. Still doesn't make complete sense but it's a little bit closer you can think of the same thing in terms of hedge funds right they're gonna make xyz they have xyz assets and they want a lot of exposure or in, in this case shorting a stock they have to have a lot of exposure right because you could blow up your whole portfolio if you're not hedged out appropriately and you're shorting a stock so what's what's been happening is over the last year you have seen a lot of rules come into place with AMC that, that have prohibited poor collateral being used to fund these short positions. Because think about it in the same context that I just put out. If you had some old beater car, right? And, and, and you were trying to pledge that as collateral for your loan, that car could be worth nothing. That car could be worth... $200 or $300 in scrap metal and they're not going to they're not going to base the loan off of poor collateral essentially is what I'm getting at here now that has made it so only a few certain asset classes can be put up as collateral for short positions as Especially and really only on AMC, GME, and your meme stocks because of the volatility that we have seen in the past. Like Arcagos going down, shorting some of these stocks. And that was during 2021, actually, on the rally to the upside. So it, it does honestly go both ways. Um, but specifically with AMC and these stocks, uh, they're in a category in and of themselves. Like if you wanted to short an Apple or something, fine. They're not going to want that much collateral because the risk that Apple doubles from here is very low. But the risk that AMC or GME or one of these other names would go up 100%, I mean, GME just went up almost 50% after their earnings, like within a couple minutes. So that highlights the risk, right, that banks are taking on or, or just people that are lending out stock in general when they do lend out that stock. Well, because of that, you can only see triple A rated securities and equities pledged as collateral. That would be Apple. That would be Microsoft. That would be Google. That would be to a lesser extent or even a greater extent. I, I say lesser extent now since there has been so much turmoil in the banking industry. But treasury bonds also are, are, are deemed as very safe collateral, right? So you can only use these assets. Well, what is starting to happen now? Let's just look at what's happening on the day. AMC stock is ramping into the close. Apple actually falling a little bit into the close. Facebook or Meta actually falling into the close. So look at these charts side by side to AMC. We'll actually do the multi chart for this one. 
because <laughs> I think to give you guys a visual makes a lot of sense here, right? Um, let's go ahead and do this on the one minute candlestick chart. Let's do the day, right? So one minute on the day, you're actually falling into the close. If we pull up AMC on this one, you're ramping into the close, right? It might be a little hard to see because I know my big head's right there. Something like a meta or anything else. I mean, look at these charts, these two charts compared to this chart. I mean, Facebook's a great example of this. It's been going down for the last 30 minutes here. And AMC has actually been rising over the last 30 minutes here. And this is a great example of what ultimately can start to happen where the collateral value of the collateral, right? An Apple stock or a Facebook or a Microsoft stock will start to lose so much value that you need to either pledge more collateral, you need to exit that short position by AKA covering on that short position or uh, find a new way out, right? To either hedge out your position a little bit more. And all of those three things would be bullish. So I think that's important to point out. And I think that could start to take hold here in the markets over the next couple of days and really throughout the rest of this week, as you do have major economic data that will also be coming out towards the end of this week. As you guys know, as I reported in the last video, core PCE index month over month, you are expecting an increase of 0.6%. Uh, January's reading was a increase of 0.6% as well. So you're expecting inflation to remain high. You're expecting personal spending to actually go down by a bit. It's expected to come in at about a half percent. January's reading was 1.5%. Uh, the personal income month over month as well is expected to go down a little bit. So you're expecting lower economic activity, right? You're expecting lower personal spending and you're expecting higher inflation and that is a recipe for disaster for this stock market as the stock market and the bond market have been pricing in and trying to price in a bunch of rate cuts by the end of this year when in all reality if inflation does not come down we will not get those rate cuts and we're not going to get rate cuts in general the fed thinks inflation is going to trend down throughout the rest of this year from this point on they don't expect inflation to hit a new high like a lot of people don't but it's not enough to give you rate cuts so the markets the bond market the stock market they are in massive disagreement here between what the fed is going to do as as far as rate policy throughout the rest of this year and it all really hinges on inflation if inflation were to drop to call it three percent from now until call it midsummer, well, a rate cut or two seems a little bit more likely. But if it does not, that's not going to happen. And that's why economic data will be the biggest sole driving factor again, as it was in 2022, here in 2023. And I think that does have some big implications for AMC as well. And believe it or not, believe it or not, like we're seeing today. I mean, AMC does not have to go down when stocks like Apple and your large tech stocks also go down. And that's, I mean, if you can't see it here in the charts, then we got a problem here because these stocks are straight down. Apple is actually, or uh, AMC actually ramping into the close. And that was the big point that I wanted to get across in the last video. And if you did not see the last video, well, hey, you're caught up here in this video. Now, let's get into actually what is happening with AMC stock here today. We're going to look at the technicals because you are above the key resistance level, $4.50 per share. And I also think that is super exciting. Although we do have about 15 minutes left of the trading day here today things could change but as of right now looking pretty good so the live short interest of free float sitting at 25 percent 129 million shares that are currently sold short cost of borrow average 385.46 percent cost of borrow max at 399 and a half percent and cost of borrow minimum at 328.35 percent interactive brokers short availability is sitting at about 204 percent cost to borrow rate so you're seeing 
number one cost bar rates that continue to stay high and, and even go higher, where there's a lack of availability to get your hands on shares with a short interest level of 25%. Given collateral that is really starting to be crunched here, uh, the the path forward is starting to look a little bit narrower for these shorts that are involved in shorting AMC. And we don't know ultimately what's going to happen in the courts coming April 27th. And I think that is going to be the next big thing to give us some news that could really rally higher from here. And what we're seeing throughout the close today with AMC is very encouraging and i want you guys to really pay attention to the price action here specifically between mega tech mega cap tech uh and amc because that's where the collateral actually is it's not really in treasury bonds i would doubt that i think the collateral more or less is 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 coming from stocks that hedge funds really have to own right apples microsoft's google's amazon's and those guys are not doing good here today so uh, I think that is very exciting. Now, let's take a look at the FTDs as well because you do still have some throughout the rest of this week. And today is March 27th. So you didn't have any FTDs that came due today. Tomorrow, you're going to have about 5.4 million FTDs that come due. On Wednesday, 4.3 million FTDs. On Thursday, 3.4 or 4. 0.3 million FTDs on Wednesday. I'm not sure if I said that right. Uh, 3.4 million FTDs that come due on Thursday and about 1 million FTDs that also come due on Friday. So I think the last week of really this extreme FTD um, activity that we have seen uh, probably going to culminate into a strong week this week. And, and, and usually to start off Monday uh, to see a strong week start of the week for AMC is typically more times than not a positive thing now option activity let's see what has changed here and for this friday you're currently looking at about twenty-eight thousand calls in the money that is up about fifteen thousand here today alone so that is uh pretty good and, and a lot of it obviously is, is people just going out and buying options that expire this friday uh because people like to trade those weekly options and that is what believe it or not can give you the bigger moves in amc stock on a week-to-week -week basis out the money calls sitting at about 95,000 in the money puts at 44,000 and out of the money puts at 94,000. So some very healthy numbers I would say you're looking at here. And if the option chain does start to populate throughout the rest of this week, that would obviously indicate some of those short term options, which on a risk to reward basis is never a smart move for you guys to do like, like never do that. It, it never buy options that expire in just a couple of days. That that's a great way to blow up your portfolio. Great way to lose all of your money. So I would never, ever say to do that ever do not do this. Let me be very, 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 very clear. Do not do this. It's not good for your financial situation regardless. But people do it. And when people do it on AMC, it gives you fresh injection of essentially hedge funds and, and market makers, whoever is uh, selling you these options, to go out and hedge those positions, which is bullish. With the stock going up, that is bullish. A traditional more or less gam squeeze. When puts also go from into the money out of the money because the stock is going higher that also is a form of buying pressure as well so i think that is uh important to point out now earnings guys this is going to be a little weird because you are going to get some important earnings this week tomorrow pre-market you're going to have Walgreens and Walgreens could have big implications for other retailers, specifically, uh, you know, pharmaceutical style kind of retailers. Think Rite Aid, think of even Walmart to a to an extent. They, they do have pharmacies and I believe every Walmart or almost every Walmart uh, that there is. I uh, think about even Myers. I think Target has pharmacies as, as well and can overall just give you a sense of how people are spending money as well. So I think that will be important. Tuesday after hours, Lululemon, Micron, and Dave and & Buster's. This is probably going to be the biggest day for sure is going to be tomorrow and after hours. Uh, you're going to get direct information on how the consumer is spending money specifically with Lululemon and even Dave and & Buster's, travel, leisure, hospitality. Think of that when you think of Dave and & Buster's. Wednesday pre 
pre-market paychecks and centas uh wednesday after hours restoration hardware thursday and after hours skills blackberry ev go and rumble as well as canoe and then on friday a couple looks like chinese names not going to be important to the market so a couple specific companies that can give you some glimpses into the state of the consumer and anything that really suggests the consumer is getting weaker from here is not gonna be a good thing now as far as the broad markets you're not really getting too much that is actually happening today uh you're getting some news out of the banking sector right that um, it's safe and sound. That's what they keep saying. That's what I reported to you guys in the first video today. And it's almost making you think that it's not at this point. Obviously, it's not. When banks go under that quick, how is it sound and, and secure? I just don't understand how that's possible. Now, First Citizens Bank officially has acquired a large chunk of SVB. And First Citizens is up 45%. This is kind of easing some of those those fears um, that all banks, all regional banks are going under or in a lot of hardship. So uh, that's definitely a positive thing here on the day. Getting some some news um, uh, from, from Biden as well as the FDIC as well. Um, that, that that is more or less trying to calm the markets but this and it's actually based off of crypto the binance founder violated compliance rules to attract us users uh cftc alleges and i think this could be the next domino to fall that could cause more fear besides earnings in the next couple of weeks because if this crypto brokerage goes down after the rally you have seen in crypto just think about what happened when ftx went under and and, and they were seen as one of the best places to put your money it's going to cause a lot more fear uncertainty and doubt and you could also tie that to uh you know amc as well a lot of these hedge funds that are involved in shorting amc are also involved in crypto and when those crypto assets also go down can help to uh, squeeze out some of those short positions because these inner workings of what collateral backs what and this collateral backs that it all gets intertwined systematically in these hedge funds portfolio so one thing moving too much or going the opposite way of these hedge funds would like can also lead to liquidity getting stretched in other places and just based off the price action today it's clear to see amc's not nearly as stressed as what the markets are doing well outperforming the markets and throughout the day amc has like i said gotten a lot stronger whereas these other names have not now at the time of recording this video 3 48 p.m eastern standard time markets will close in about 12 minutes here amc is now above four dollars 50 cents per share sitting at four dollars 54 cents per share up 1.57 percent here on the day this is the major resistance level guys look how much resistance you're getting at 450 one two three four five days in, almost in a row right five days i believe out of the last I guess not in a row, like like 10 days. You have intraday broke above 450 to get rejected by the end of the day and not close above 450. Today, you're above it by a couple cents, so it's not set in stone, but it looks like from here, you're going to hold above the resistance level and that can mark a turn uh, in really momentum and sentiment and get you that rally to the upside. So, uh, pretty exciting, at least what we're seeing today in the actual price action. Hard to say what's going to happen. I think AMC will mainly be driven off of news that does come out um, with regards to this banking situation, guys. So that is going to do it for this video. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.